Hey, Peter Buswell for DrVOIP.com, your source for remote technical support. If we can help, give us a call. We're going to talk uh, about configuring recording, setting up your Cisco Unified uh, Call Manager cluster to support compliance recording. And we'll use the Cisco Workforce Optimization as the uh, example that we're going to use in the recording. The Cisco Workforce uh, it, it product is uh, really made by Calabrio. It's private labeled by Cisco. It's a robust product. It can be deployed for very small to very, very large deployments. And it offers compliance recording as well as uh, a couple of different levels of uh, quality management, including screen recording, so you could set it up to uh, record the screens of an agent in addition to the audio uh, recording. And it has an ability to do metrics and evaluations and all that good uh, call center stuff that supervisors like. So what I'm going to show you here is how to set up the uh, recording. We'll be using network recording. I'll explain that in a minute. Now, I'll give you a quick overview of workforce management, uh, the configuration, uh, show you the interfaces. This is not meant to be a tutorial on um, Calabria. Uh, actually, those guys have a great site. You can go there, and they have um, free uh, online uh, training for uh, implementation engineers as well as supervisors and agents. And in this discussion, we'll talk about some of the trade-offs uh, that you all have to uh, make decisions on as you roll this out. So first decision you're going to have to make is what the recording format, how, you know, how, we're, how are you going to do this recording? If you think about it, recording means that I've got to get the media stream from the target that I'm recording over to the recording server. Uh, said another way, I have to set up a conference call with the recording server. And there are several different ways to do that. Now, if you think about it, you can just, uh, you know, if you were doing a packet capture, you would know that uh, you, you, you have to have a way to copy the packets from your target device over to your packet analyzer. Well, the recording's going to work pretty much the same way. You're either going to implement span recording or some format in which you tell your Ethernet fabric to copy these ports, target ports, over to the port that the recording server is on. Now, that's a lot of work. Uh, sometimes you have to do it. There's no alternative. Um, in this, we're going to take a look at uh, what's called network recording and using a SIP trunk. And basically, we will turn on the um, built-in bridge in a device and use that as a way to get the media stream over to the recorder. Now, keep in mind that that means you have to have devices that are uh, able to do that. Not all Cisco phones can do that. And clearly, if you're you know, working on Citrix or some other uh, soft phone deployment, you may not have the ability to do the built-in bridge. Then we're going to have to make a decision about what the source target is going to be. Now, you can think about it this way. Am I going to record trunk side or station side or both? So if I'm going to do trunk side, that means I want to tap the recording when it hits the gateway. And the good news is there you will hear everything that happens um, on that uh, side of the connection. So if the, if the call comes in, it goes to an extension, you're recording that. If it's transferred to another extension, you're recording that. So it may be such that you don't want to record every extension. In which case, for example, on call center, you might say, I want to record only the agents. And therefore, if the call comes into an agent desktop, an agent instrument, let's go ahead and record that. But if they transfer this off to the CEO of the company, we don't want to record it. And so making a decision about using a gateway or using a phone are an important part of the trade-offs that you have to focus in. Uh, additionally, 
if you're going to use the gateway, you're going to need to be able to configure media forking in the gateway, and that is iOS uh, specific. So you're going to need the correct iOS to do that. In this example, we're going to do phone side recording using the built-in bridge. So the configuration tasks are pretty straightforward. Um, at the system level, you want to go into system parameters. Uh, when you're working in Cisco, you notice all of the settings in the drop-down windows that say default. If you've never ever considered where those default settings are, let me tell you, they're in system parameters. So in the call manager, go to system, system parameters, and that's where you could set up the system defaults for your system. And the two that are of import here are the concept of... Uh, notification recording notification do we want to provide a beep tone and who do we want to provide that to do we want to provide it to the caller uh, or to the agent or to both but you will go and set that up in system parameters also you can set the uh, built-in bridge the BIB built-in bridge you want to set it to on as the system default now understand that you can set it up as your system default but uh, the device settings will override that. So if the device setting says off, it's off. But go ahead and set it up as a default. Next, you're going to have to set up a SIP trunk. SIP trunks are pretty easy to set up. Um, you're going to make a decision about do you want to set it up to the gateway? And you're also going to need to set one up to the recorder. So if you're just doing phone recording, then you, you, you won't need a, a SIP trunk to your gateway. You'll just need it to the recorder. I would also suggest you look carefully at the security profile that you assign to that SIP trunk. Uh, in there, if you go to that uh, profile and you scroll to transport, you'll notice you can set it for TCP or UDP and you can set it inbound and outbound. I found uh, when I configured this uh, Cisco Workforce uh, Optimization Server, the Calabria server, that I got in trouble if I left it at TCP. Um, what I ended up doing was setting the outbound transport to UDP. So just keep that as something to look out for. You're going to have to set up a JTAP user, uh, an application user. This will be the user that uh, you'll use in the configuration of your recording server. Uh, basically, all the recording servers, media sense, uh, workforce uh, optimization, they all require a user who can get in there. And that user is going to need uh, to have certain CTI permissions. And I'll show you those. So here's a, a screenshot uh, of uh, system service parameters. And you'll notice that there's a section there for cluster parameters for call recording. So play recording notification tone to the observed target. Uh, and you set it to true or false. And uh, play it. Uh, so in other words, if you set it to gateway recording, that's who's going to get the uh, tone if you put it on phone, that's who's going to get it, or you can just say both parties. Um, also, uh, this is where you would go to set up your built-in bridge. So you want to set that as a, a system-wide, cluster-wide default. Just uh, flip it on. In your SIP security profile, this is where um, you want to check the incoming transport type. Uh, I got it working with TCP and UDP, but in the outbound transport type, I had to send it to UDP to get it to work. So this is not on the SIP trunk, but when you're configuring your SIP trunk, you'll, you'll probably use standard uh, non-secure uh, SIP profile, and uh, that will apply a particular security profile go to the security profile section of the call manager and just check the, uh, the transport type. Next, uh, you'll want to set up a dial pattern, uh, the number that uh, 
uh, users effectively dial. Again, the model you might want to think about is when you're recording, you're basically setting up a conference call with the recorder. And to do that, obviously, you would need to dial some digits. So in your uh, um, recording profile, you're going to uh, name it and, and name the digits. Uh, that will be the destination. And uh, configure a dial pattern. Uh, uh, assign it to a partition and a calling search space, uh, your user phones are going to have to be able to access that partition, so keep that in mind. And you will then have to configure your individual users, and they need to be part of CCM end users. Uh, standard uh, CTI allow for call monitoring and recording and uh, uh, allow the control of the phone. So um, get those set up on per user basis, a per device basis. Uh, um, here's uh, looking at a device. So when you go in the call manager to phones and devices and find the phone you want, uh, you're going to scroll in the device and just make sure it is set to on. It might say default, in which case if you set the system parameters, service uh, parameters to be uh, on, that will work. Uh, but understand again that the device setting will overrule the service parameter settings. Then you're going to go to the directory number on the device that you're going to add or target for recording. And there are three pieces here you're going to set. You're going to set the recording option. So it's either going to be disabled or automatic or selective. So set that up. I have found out that even though I wanted to use selective recording, in other words, I wanted to give the users a button on their phone that said record, I found out that I had to set this to uh, automatic call recording enabled. The recording profile, um, you want to uh, um, select the profile that you created uh, for this application. In this case, I call the Work uh, Quality Management Recording Server. And then you're going to select your media source. Now, again, this is either going to be gateway, you're doing trunk side, or it's going to be uh, um, the phone. In this case, we're setting it for the phone. The recording profile, Oops. device, device settings, and recording profile. It's uh, pretty simple. It's um, I had previously set this up. I'll just show you what it is. Uh, you're just going to give it a name. You're going to uh, who um, picked the calling search space that you assigned to the partition containing the uh, dial pattern. So in this case, I set it up to be 899. So the recording destination address, what they're looking for here is the dial pattern. And just go ahead and uh, set that up because when uh, you assign this uh, to your destination number, so your dial number configuration, you'll need to point it at this profile. After the uh, installation of the quality management uh, server, in this uh, example, there's only a single server to house the components, but the interface is going to be the same. So generally, you'll log in to the quality management administrator. Uh, you'll find you have system configuration and the recording server configuration, and then your user groups and a place to set up your workflows for your recording. The basic system cons configuration consists of setting up the um, SQL database. So the Cisco quality management server requires a SQL uh, server, and typically uh, in a single server deployment, you'll install this uh, SQL Express, and it'll be right here on the same server. The Cisco Unified uh, Contact Center database. So here you're going to define 
the name of your primary and secondary UCCX servers. Um, the user, and, and, and this is just the way it is, don't try and use anything else, but you'll use the UCCX workforce user. So go into system administration, go to, go to tools, password management. If you don't know the password for that uh, user, and go ahead and make sure you know what it is. But that's what they want here. They don't want anything other than the UCCX workforce user. Also, case sensitive. Don't try to use uppercase here. It wants lowercase uh, letters. UCCX has a number of users, special users. And in the workforce management server configuration, you have to provide the CC database user, and they insist on using a particular user. So uh, you probably won't know what the password is. You don't need to reset it. So you want to go to user management, right? Password, excuse me, tools, password management. And in there, uh, you'll find these, uh, these special users. That, um, You've got a wall board user, you're recording workforce, historical, blah, 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 blah. They want this guy here. So when you're setting up the workforce uh, server, it's going to ask you for the username and password to access the CC uh, database, the contact center database, where you know it will be able to get the agent uh, configurations and teams and things like that. So this is where it is. Go ahead and reset the password. You're done. Your telephony group consists of the signaling group, the recording cluster, and in a single server deployment, these are all going to be the same. If this was multiple servers where you might have a one server uh, um, for each of these components, you would uh, have a much larger deployment. This is a simple uh, recording server deployment, and it only has this single server. Enterprise settings. Here we're going to go ahead and pick the um, wave file size that we want. SPX here being the most compact, and each of these being successfully uh, larger. Site settings. Um, your inclusion list here, we're going to record everything, but you can set up an inclusion list. Inclusion lists happen before the call is recorded. Workflows happen after the call is recorded. So an inclusion list is going to set um, the kinds of uh, recordings we want to do, inbound, outbound, we want to record particular pattern, etc. Um, monitoring notification, pretty straightforward, and then your system status. So when you're setting up your devices, if you're using network-based uh, recording, you're going to uh, go out here, enable your uh, unified contact manager for recording, and go ahead and look for the devices that you want to record, bring them into this um, that's part of the configuration. Setting up your users, uh, um, licensing your users. It appears that though the users are named, you can uh, unlicense them uh, if you want to move your recordings around. You'll set up your group administration, and then you'll set up your workflows. This is not intended to be anything more than an overview of the configuration. Uh, there's a lot here. Um, but um, for simple compliance recording, it's a pretty straightforward configuration. If you're not going to do screen recording, and you're not going to do any quality metrics, uh, then your basic compliance recording will get the job done. Um, and it's a fairly excellent interface. To log into the Cisco Unified Workforce Optimization uh, um, is a web interface. Uh, agents can make use of it as well as supervisors. If agents are empowered to use their own uh, 
you know, review their own recordings. Down here, you'll see it validate my PC configuration. It's going to run a simple test to determine if your uh, computer is prop properly configured. Uh, what you're going to need to do, however, is to uh, download and install certain uh, plugins uh, from the site. So the correct place for that is to go to the server itself and top QM administrator.htm. And I'll tell you once again that you've got to have the correct um, got to have the correct case. It, it's sensitive. If you use a lower case or upper case in the wrong place, you'll get it. You'll get an error. But at any rate, you're going to come here and download the various uh, tools that you might need, the plugins you need uh, to make use of the uh, web interface for monitoring uh, recordings. This system is set up just to do quality recordings, but if you were going to do review screen recordings or do quality management uh, applications, you would still have to come here uh, to the site and get your plugins. Once you do that, you're able to log in. The web interface to the Cisco Unified Workforce Optimization Server is uh, generally available to everybody. Um, agents may be allowed to listen to their own recordings, but basically you're just going to go to the server IP address of the uh, server, set up your search uh, criteria, or you're going to uh, select perhaps a specific phone number or all phone numbers. You're going to set your date range. You'll be able to select today, last week, uh, yesterday, whatever. And then you can hit the search button and it's going to go in there and pull out any recordings that uh, might be appropriate for your search criteria. It's pretty straightforward. It's not terribly complex in terms of um, being able to uh, select and listen to recordings.